Things which satirize violence in their medium to comment on how bad it is suck. Okay, so this title is a little misleading. Let me explain. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how two games in a movie which use satire to explore the meta of their own medium, specifically to criticize the way the violence is portrayed in that medium. These pieces are Spec Ops The Line, Undertale, and Funny Games. The title of this video is misleading because none of these things actually suck. Funny Games is a great movie, Undertale is a pretty good video game which unfortunately is surrounded by a culture that hypes it up so much they could not possibly live up to the expectations one would come into it with, and Spec Ops The Line is also a pretty great video game. I guess I'll quickly give a rundown of these texts as a refresher. Undertale is a game about how, yes, people do bad things, but at the end of the day, the only way to make the world a better place is through forgiveness. Funny Game says, hey, isn't it like really fucked up that the Saw franchise made a billion gajillion dollars when it's just glorified murder porn? Maybe watching and enjoying those films isn't a morally neutral action? And Spec Ops The Line takes the radical stance, maybe war crimes are bad? And yet there is, at the core, a paradox here. In Spec Ops The Line, there's a famous scene which presents itself as a typical helicopter gunship mission you would find in a Call of Duty game. You shoot the white glowing targets. But then, the game forces you to walk through the area filled with the civilians you just murdered with white phosphorus. Look what you've done. Do you feel like a hero now? The entire game is summed up with that scene, and it's a very poignant message. The abstraction of war in video games to the point where we will, without question, shoot these glowing targets has real-world implications. In the real world, in real war, drone pilots control the drones remotely using Xbox controllers. Soldiers often come back from deployment comparing real-life battle to a video game. Also, some games companies literally receive subsidies from the US military to portray them in a good light. In the video game world, you must always be making the right decision by killing the glowing targets because you're a video game protagonist and if you're doing it, it must be right because you're a video game protagonist. Spec Ops says, this is harmful, war is a real thing, real people suffer and die, recreating war for a fun game isn't an innocent action, it's complacency. All sounds good so far, right? Yes, this game is good, that's what I told you. However, there is, often a, there is an often pointed out flaw in this presentation. With the white phosphorus scene, there is no option not to shoot the civilians. There is no chance to actually take a different path. The game hands you the gun, makes you do the bad thing, then turn around, turns around and berates you for doing it. So, in order to make that point, the game has to reproduce the exact thing it's trying to critique. If you could choose not to kill those civilians, if you could choose to go home back to your wife and kids in America and leave Dubai behind, the game would have no point to make. If you turn the game off before ever getting to that chapter and never play it again, the game never gets to teach you the lesson that you are a bad person. So, although it pretends otherwise, Spec Ops actually wants you to kill those people. If you do not kill those civilians, the text has no point. So it has to force your hand. The choice is shifted. It's no longer an in-game choice, but the choice to put the game down and walk away. Spec Ops says, if you were a good person, you would have stopped playing by now. But to what end? If the text wants you not to consume it that badly, then the best way to do that would be would be to have never been produced in the first place. If the author had not written those evil actions for you, you wouldn't be able to take them. In trying to critique games which let you unquestionably commit wrong things, the game ends up reproducing the exact problem. This is the same for all three texts, except, well, Undertale is a little worse because its moral lesson is complete bullshit. Funny Games is the best of the three in combating this paradox. Spec Ops still has fun shooter mechanics. Even the genocide route in Undertale still has satisfying combat and story which makes you want to keep playing. Funny Games seems to actively discourage you from viewing it. There is almost no gore, all the violence happens off screen. The one chance the characters have of beating the bad guys is undone in a completely unfair and unsatisfying way. The film is boring and tedious on purpose so that you cannot possibly argue that it justifies its own violence for entertainment entertainment value, because it does everything in its power to be unentertaining. And yet, I do not believe that. I think the film has simply shifted the position of the entertainment value. The entertainment comes from, well, what I'm doing right now, from analysing the movie and discussing it, trying to understand its messaging. That is an entertaining activity, it gives you a dopamine hit. If it wasn't interesting or fun, no one would do it. It's cool and fun to try and get, what, get at what the movie means. The move here is to shift the blame here onto the audience. You're the one making this interesting, not me. And yet clearly this is not true. It's an interesting movie. It would never have been made if no one on the creative team thought it was a good idea. 
There is not just one way to be entertained. The human mind is more complex than that. People love Clannad and Anohana, even though they both fucking suck, because they are engineered to make you cry, and crying is emotionally satisfying, interesting, and entertaining. Even though it's supposed to be a negative emotion, we seek out that experience. It's a form of catharsis. So too is the intellectual stimulation of an artsy flick like Funny Games. It's not titillating in the same thrill-tastic, adrenaline-fueled way as Final Destination or Saw, but it's still entertaining, just on a different level. So why, according to the author, is one of these options okay and the other one not okay? There is no answer given, just an assumption that, well, lowbrow media is bad because it's lowbrow and highbrow media is good because it's highbrow. Let's not talk about how lowbrow media is associated with the working class, whereas highbrow intellectual media is supposed to be for the academic middle classes who can afford to spend their time thinking about high concept art and selling it for millions of dollars because they don't have to worry about feeding themselves every day. That's right, Funny Games is accidentally classist. Sorry, Patricia Taxon, we're hashtag cancelling Funny Games. Undertale falls into the same spec ops problem again. The route which is supposed to be a morally wrong choice from the player, the genocide route, is ultimately pretty fun and enjoyable, rendering his message kind of ruined. But we've already talked about that, so instead let's shit on the moral messaging real quick. Undertale expects you to forgive a person who serially murders children. It expects you to forgive a person who spends the whole game manipulating you and is also revealed to have kidnapped and tortured innocents under some, high, some pretenses of a higher moral purpose. Why should you forgive these people? Because it's the right thing to do. Why is it the right thing to do? Because I put it in my game as the good ending, so it must be good or why else would I have called it the good ending? What do you mean my moral compass is entirely based on the neoliberal Christian values held by the predominant ideology of my culture, not some objective right and wrong? Don't kill the landlords or the bourgeoisie or the mass murderers, that would be rude. Think about their children's. Think about their children, think about their feelings. <laughs> Okay, I'm exaggerating, but the point still stands. According to Undertale, forgiveness is the only acceptable moral choice if you have the ability to do so. Why? Because in the limited scope of the game, the game world, it ends well for you. There is no reason other than because the text wants you to. Undertale aside, am I saying the messaging of funny games and spec ops the line is bad or wrong? No, of course not. What I'm saying is we need a double loop-de-loop -loop, triple back around game which reproduces the tropes of these texts in order to critically examine the flaws in an objective moral system. Listen, I come from anime, a medium that has been systematically ripping itself apart in more and more extreme ways since the 70s. Spec Ops is just a worse version of War in the Pocket, don't at me. So, anime spends decades performing examinative autofellatio, figuring out what tropes mean and how they work. Unlike western cinema, not just in cult classics like Funny Games, but in the middle of incredibly well-known shows like Evangelion, the Monogatari series, and Hands Off Azoken, which is way more meta than people are giving it credit for. Expect a video on that soon, it's not just a love letter to the future word Conan, it's a post-structuralist examination of the entire medium. My point is, where has this left us? In anime, pointing out the meta text is a trope in itself. Watch the Digibo video, anime is getting lazy with its meta for more info. It hasn't pushed the medium forwards. It has created some incredible works, but ultimately the impact on culture is... what exactly? We need to be doing better. Undertale, Spec Ops and Funny Games are a great step in the right direction, but they're decades away from being conclusive. They asked the very first question, hey, is this really okay? Provided the answer, probably not, and then step back and claim their powers of critical acclaim and awards. It's not enough. Artists, this is where we come in. We need to explore this further. I'm not satisfied with this answer and you shouldn't be either. Or maybe you think I should be satisfied with this answer and I'm completely wrong. Either way, the discussion needs to go further. I want to hear what you have to say. If you want to hear what I have to say, you can press the subscribe button and see the rest of my meta clusterfuck series, The Sacred Cow. Or, if you really like what I have to say, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for listening to my uninformed ramblings. Look forward to worse videos in the future.